Hi everyone, apa kabar? Zarina kini kembali. Zarina is back. I hope all of you are doing great. Today we will learn about pronouns in Malay language. I have been dilly dilling to create a video on this topic and I think now is about time to talk about them. As with other languages, pronouns are used as words that can work independently from anyone else and that alludes either to the members in the talk. For example, I, you, or to a person or thing referenced somewhere else in the talk. For example, she, it, this. In Malay, pronouns are known as kata ganti nama diri or kata ganti diri. Kata means a word, ganti, change, nama, name, diri, self. Pronouns are grouped in three categories. The first one is kata ganti diri pertama, first person pronoun. Kata ganti diri kedua, second person pronoun. And lastly, kata ganti diri ketiga, third person pronoun. I have created a table for all the pronouns that we will be using in this unit. And you may go to the website islandmalay.blogspot.com to download the lesson in PDF form. I recommend that you go to the blog to see all the complete details of the pronouns used uh, for each group. But however, in this uh, unit, uh, in this video, especially in the U this YouTube video, I will be only explaining uh, the pronouns which is used daily and which are useful to you. Here we have a table for first person pronoun. And the first row is for the first person pronoun in singular form, I. And in polite or standard form, we normally use saya, S-A-Y-A, pronounced as saya. And this is normally used in, in daily situation everywhere, uh, whether you are among strangers or among family, family faces, or if you want to be polite uh, to all the person around you, I recommend that you use sire. And and at the next column is I uh, translated uh, to familiar uh, I uh, in English translated to aku wa gua or here we can use, uh, there are two versions of abbreviated forms for singular I. Uh, one is sire, uh, which is abbreviated to only S and Y. Meanwhile, in the familiar column, we can see that um, it is abbreviated to A and K. Um, this is normally done by the teenagers nowadays where they use a lot of social media applications like whatsapp and instagram and so on but i recommend that you use only sire because uh, since you are not familiar with the language itself and not to be rude to the people around you it is better to use and to stick to sire next uh, to the first person pronoun plural on the second row for we it is translated to kita or kami and in some languages that uh, it is specified how many people that can can use kita or kami in malay language um, you can use this starting from two person uh, or more for familiar situation between family friends uh, for myself Exactly, we normally use this kita orang or kita orang, and we abbreviate it to kita orang by shortening the the word orang. Orang means a person. I can say that we normally use. I think my parents they don't use this term. 
I hardly I hardly heard them using this uh, word kita orang kita orang oh kita kita orang. I think uh, most probably because I come I am my origin is from Johor which is the southern part of um, of Malaysia on the west side. My fathers I think my parents they use kita. In the next slide we have a few examples for first person pronoun singular the first phrase or the first sentence is saya seorang doktor normally we pronounce doctor not as doctor but i for myself personally i just use with doctor the same as in english and it is widely used like that i am a doctor saya seorang doktor It is better to use saya instead of the informal aku seorang doktor. Of course, maybe if you are between friends, I will say aku doktor. I I will omit uh, the word seorang. If your friend is asking you like this, then I will say aku doktor instead of saya doktor because we are familiar, right? We are intimate. Okay, the next sentence is aku tak tahu. I don't know. Of course, it is interchangeable with saya. Saya tak tahu. If someone, let's say, your boss is asking you, uh, do you know this or that? Then you can reply, saya tak tahu. Or if some strangers asking you, do you know where this place is? Then you will just say, saya tak tahu. Or in fact, if someone asks you, uh, do you speak Malay? Then you can just say, saya tak tahu. Uh, here, saya and aku is interchangeable. While saya is used in polite or standard setting, however, aku is only used with familiar people between family members and friends. Let's look at the examples for first person pronoun, plural, we. The first sentence is, kami mahukan perubahan. We want changes. The second one is kita adalah rakyat Malaysia. We are Malaysians. Kami and kita is interchangeable. For example, if I want to say kita mahukan perubahan, kami adalah rakyat Malaysia, both means the same. Okay, for kita orang or kita orang, this is very colloquial. It is used in familiar settings only. For example, if I'm speaking with my friends, then I will say, Kita orang nak pergi raya rumah Cik Jah. We want to visit Cik Jah's house. Of course, if you have a pen pole which is really close to you, once you are in Malaysia, you can try to use this word, Kita orang, with them. Who knows, maybe they are quite excited to hear you speaking in the colloquial form. Okay, now we will move on to the second person pronoun. Uh, here is a table. The first one is uh, for, the first row is for the singular. For the singular you, in polite or standard form, we will use awa or kamu. And for the familiar and family friends, we will use engkau, kau, and ko. If between, for example, if between friends, um, there are some friends that you are not so close, right? Uh, that you just know them because you just know them. Okay, but if you have a really close friends uh, that you know them since childhood, Then you can use engkau, kau, and ko. In fact, there are some friends of mine which, uh, whom are very adamant that we should not use engkau, kau, ko because it sounds quite rude to the ears. But uh, for myself, it means that we are really, we are really close. Uh, if if you are not, then we will normally use our and kamu. But some there are some people who are really polite and they. They they refuse to use engkau, kau, or ko, but I think it depends on the person itself. But if 
for yourself or your case, be, um, since you are you are not familiar with the language itself or you're not familiar with the person that you're meeting, then I suppose you need to use our okamu. And notice that some there are some couples, uh, they normally will just use our okamu because that sounds uh, quite romantic between them. Because if you use nkau, kau, and ko between couples, that it means that they are not respected respective towards each other okay let's go to the next word um, not the next word I mean uh, the next row is for plural uh, for the second person pronoun um, for you all um, normally we will add another word which is uh, which is semua s-e-m-u-a uh, it is pronounced as semua uh, when combined with the singular you, which is awa or kamu, then we will say it as awa semua, kamu semua, kalian. Of course, for example, my teacher is speaking to us, then they will say kamu semua, kalian. Some people will use awak semua, but I usually um, hear a lot more kamu semua or kalian used. And meanwhile, if, let's say, the teacher is quite young, I mean, not really, maybe have a 10 years, less than 10 years gap between us, then most probably they will use korang. And sometimes in in the... Social media applications, uh, we normally just use it as K-O-R-G because it's the shorter form. We want to we want to save some time, right? Uh, let's move on to the examples for second person pronoun, singular. The first sentence is, Awak nak makan apa malam ni? What do you want to eat tonight? Kamu dah mandi? Have you showered? Engkau tak ingat ke? Don't you remember? Aku tak boleh maafkan kau. I cannot forgive you. Kau dah bayar hutang PTPTN? Have you paid PTPTN loan? As a reminder that engkau, aku, and ko, they are used only in familiar settings. But all of them are interchangeable. For example, if you want to use awa instead of engkau, then awa tak ingat ke? They have exactly the same meaning. It's only that uh, there are um, varieties of words that can be used for second person pronoun singular. Okay, for the second person pronoun plural, uh, which is for awa semua, kamu semua, and kalian, and also korang, uh, the first sentence is bila awa semua nak ke rumah saya, when do you all want to come to my house? Bagaimana kamu semua sampai situ? How did you all arrive there? Di mana kalian dapat duit ni? Where did you all get this money. Korang dah tengok film ni? Have you watched this movie? Again, korang must be used only in familiar settings. And um, of course, they are all interchangeable and they relay exactly the same meaning. And as I said, that there are varieties of way to, to use uh, you all in Malay language. Okay, let's move on to the third person pronoun. This will be the last table. Uh, for the first row, singular for he or she. It is unisex. You can use dear in polite or standard situations and also in familiar situations. For plural, they in Malay, we call it as mereka. And uh, in familiar settings, dia orang, diorang, diorang as abbreviated form is 
D I O R G. As I've mentioned before, orang means person or a person, but here it means when you when you combine it with the orang, it is plural. Okay, for the first uh, example, for the third person pronoun singular, dia dah berpunya. She has a boyfriend or he has a girlfriend. Notice that we will not know the gender of uh, the subject here. It is all based on context. For third person pronoun plural, mereka tinggal bersama-sama. They live together. Diorang or diorang dah makan. They have eaten. As I've told you before that, please, please always use the polite or uh, standard form uh, when you are in Malaysia. Unless you are really close with that person that you are speaking to. Okay, we are now at the end of our lesson. Macam mana pelajaran hari ini? Macam mana pelajaran hari ini? How is the lesson today? I hope that you can give a lot of comments for me to improve myself for future contents in this YouTube channel. Or if you have the time, please also comment in my blog, islandmalay.blogspot.com. And I hope that we can meet again. Sampai jumpa lagi.